August 16, 2014, earthquake activity beneath the Bardarbunga volcano in Iceland indicated that magma was on the move. By coincidence, my daughter and I had booked a National Geographic Adventures tour to Iceland in early September, and we watched the seismic reports tracking the progress of the magma with considerable interest. Bardarbunga is located under the Vatjökull ice cap in Iceland's eastern volcanic zone. Early seismicity indicated that a dike was being injected to the north of the main magma chamber. Iceland sits atop the mid-Atlantic ridge and is slowly being pulled apart. Fractures that develop provide lines of weakness into which magma can be injected. Imagine that we are looking down into the earth from above at a depth of about 5 kilometers or approximately 3 miles. Forces exerted by the magma will break rocks and trigger earthquakes. These can then be recorded and allow a window into what's going on underground. Through late August, dike injection continued to the north of Bardarbunga. The eroded volcanic neck called Ship Rock in New Mexico provides a great example of dikes radiating away from a central conduit. It's possible for a dike to be injected without being followed by a subsequent volcanic eruption. Tracking the earthquakes online using a near real-time plot posted by an Icelandic programmer, we were excited to see progressive shallowing of earthquake focal depths beginning on August 27th. By the 28th, the fissure eruption had begun. How's this for an outstanding adventure? We're going to go fly over an erupting volcano. <laughs> As commonly happens with fissure eruptions, what had started out as a continuous curtain of fire had closed down to a line of separate craters by the time we flew over. The lava fanned out into separate lobes rather than flowing as one continuous sheet. A few days later, flows from this eruption entered a nearby river, generating a huge cloud of water vapor. This fantastic time lapse of that event was posted by the Earth Science Institute at the University of Iceland on Facebook. This is clearly a slow-moving aa flow at a distance of about 25 kilometers from the fissure. As we toured Iceland, evidence of the eruption followed us throughout the eastern part of the country. In Egilstalar, a volcanic haze diffused the view of nearby glaciers. Reminds me of air quality in Los Angeles on what would be considered a relatively good day. As we skirted the restricted zone, the volcanic cloud was easily visible from over 40 miles away. The, steam, the clouds that is there, this is the, where the lava is meeting the river. If you look there, you can see the steams coming up. Near Lake Mevan, we could see the glow of the volcano reflected off the clouds, while the aurora borealis danced overhead. 50 mile per hour wind gusts made photography difficult, but what an experience! As of the end of September, reports are that the eruption is still going strong. Cooled lava where it entered the river has blocked the northward progress of the flow, which is now expanding laterally. The largest cone is now over 50 meters tall. Large earthquakes continue at Bardarbunga as the top of the caldera collapses after withdrawal of the magma. 
As of September 26th, the ground had subsided an astonishing 29 meters at the crest of the volcano. Stepping back and taking a look at the big picture indicates that if these lavas are not scoured away by glaciers or carried off in some colossal outburst flood, in less than 20 million years they will form part of the floor of the Atlantic Ocean as Iceland continues to split apart. Wow. Maps for this episode are from the SIL Monitoring Group, Iceland Meteorological Office, the Institute of Earth Science at the University of Iceland, the Nordic Volcanological Center, the webpage of Dr. Tobias Wiesenberger, bathymetry of the North Atlantic was from NOAA, the photograph of the aurora was by Megan Colbath, and all other imagery was by yours truly. Special thanks to Lever, Helga, and our fellow travelers on what was truly an excellent adventure. Dr. C's Excellent Adventures are sponsored by Conqueror Bristleworm science and nature themed gifts, including t shirts, phone covers, really stylish ties, and much, much more.